hi welcome to the kernel training uh, before starting the session uh, before starting the session i would like to uh, introduce myself so later you can introduce yourself to me so that we can start the session i'm lakshmi and uh, i'm having nearly 12 years of experience in training and development as well as i'm working as a scientist in the area of grid computing and this is my introduction uh, I'd like to have an introduction from your end so that we can start the class. Can you everybody uh, hear my voice? Please type in the chat window so that we can go ahead. Please type in the chat window if you can hear my voice. Okay. So, in advanced Java, we have uh, several modules uh, present in the advanced Java. The first and the foremost module will start that is JDBC that is called as Java database copy. Uh, the other module is called as Swings, uh, and the next module we will be having uh, servlets, uh, JSP, networking, RMI. So these are the modules which are present in the Java database connectivity. The prerequisite for learning advanced Java is we expect everybody to have the knowledge of core Java because Sikkim uh, Manipal University. Uh, December 2011. Okay, I have completed your BSc IT. Okay, very good. Okay, Vikas Kumar Sharma. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, yes, I listen your voice. Very good. Okay, thank you so much. There are a number of other uh, attendees are there. Uh, uh, we will read their uh, introduction, uh, uh, but uh, we can't read everybody's introduction. So uh, that is the only few introductions only I am reading. So from Sikkim uh, we have uh, Vikas uh, Kumar Sharma. Uh, he has done his B uh, BSc IIT. Very good. I appreciate you. Uh, Vikas, uh, I welcome you for learning from, uh, from, uh, from the kernel training. Uh, please type in the chat window. Do you have the knowledge of core Java? Not only for Vikas Sharma. It is for everybody. People, please type in the chat window. Do we have the knowledge of core so our interaction part and introducing each other? And uh, do we have the knowledge of uh, the core Java? Please type in the chat window so that we will like to give some uh, 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 instructions so that how to go ahead with the core Java part and all. Uh, so please type in the chat window. Quickly type in the chat window. Let us not waste time in uh, typing uh, the things. Very good. I have a core knowledge of Java. Okay, many people said yes, yes, yes. Okay, right. Okay, Kalyani, Kalyan from West. Right. Thank you so much, everybody. I welcome you. I appreciate you, everybody. And uh, today uh, we'll have uh, the learning of JDBC. As I already said to you, that there are a number of mod modules present in the core Java. Uh, sorry, in the advanced Java. So among all those modules, the first module is Java Database Connectivity. There are other modules like Swings, uh, uh, we have uh, Networking Path, we have RMA, Remote Method Invocation Concepts, we have uh, Servlets, we have uh, JSP. After completing of Advanced Java, we will be having projects also. Uh, we will be not dealing only one project, we will be dealing number of projects. Right, we will do a number of projects. As soon as we will be completing our uh, Swings concept, we will be having one project based on JDBC and Swings. After that, uh, once we complete servlets and JSP, we will be having web based applications, which, is, which will be having connection between. Okay, Vikas is saying, but I forgot some part. No problem, Vikas. Uh, I am here to help you. Uh, you no need to uh, worry anything. Uh, I will make you the expert, no problem at all. But the only thing is, you need to attend the classes regularly. That's all, not more than that. Uh, I'm giving you complete assurance that I will make you expert in the subject. Don't worry about it. And if you have any questions also from Core Java, if you have any doubt part also, if you have any doubt at all, uh, you can uh, put uh, email to kernel training. Uh, uh, we will help you from the kernel training, no problem at all. So advanced Java, anyhow we are training you, we will be training you and we will go very slowly because uh, reaching to every student level is our motto. That is, uh, we will not train you in such a manner that 
uh, we will complete in stipulated time, like one month duration or two months duration, this is not like such. My intention is to reach every individual student, that is my core part, okay, that is the core part of the kernel training. Any questions you have, you can type me. My core Java has been done in, still from graduate, I didn't get job in industry, okay, my core Java has done in first year B. Okay, no problem, uh, no problem, this is all uh, small aspects for us, no problem. Getting job, uh, all these things are nothing, just remove everything from your mind and uh, just uh, learn the subject happily, right? Uh, so, uh, when, when you do hard work, suddenly the job is going to come, there is no doubt in that, okay? So, uh, don't worry uh, all those things, uh, you certainly will get a job in industry. Uh, because industry always have a requirement of so experts and uh, good people so who have a good knowledge, right? So uh, learn the subject and I am giving an assurance that uh, I will make you good, don't worry, Vikas Kumar, don't worry, uh, you will be the best person I am telling uh, because uh, improve the uh, zeal of learning first of all, right? Uh, don't worry, okay. I pay 60,000 in CAT education, no problem, uh, this is all small, small issues, no problem. That's what I'm telling you, Vikas Kumar, I forget everything, no problem. You learn the subject properly, uh, that's enough, okay, and uh, uh, we'll go in, no problem, right? Okay, uh, you have, you had a very bad experience, I can understand, uh, uh, but uh, uh, this is an assurance from my side, Vikas Kumar, Vikas, I'm giving an assurance from kernel training. Suddenly, I will reach you at the core level point, right? Don't worry, uh, forget everything, learn the subject properly, right? Shall we go ahead, Vikas? Uh, please give me a cheerful, okay, thank you so much. Okay, be courageous always, everything is possible. Never step down, okay? Always, you should think ahead, right? You can achieve, you will get the job in industry, don't worry, right? Shall we go ahead? Right, so... Uh, we'll start the class. Okay, I understand Vikas. I understand. You no, no problem. No problem. You will get job. Don't worry. Don't worry. Right. So uh, let us start the introduction class of Gary BC. In this session, uh, we will cover you some important points. As uh, today is the beginning class, we will have only one hour of sessions. That's all. Not more than that. Uh, <coughs> from tomorrow onwards, we have we'll be having. Uh, as usual uh, session, the sessions planned by the kernel training. So in this class, we will be seeing about the introduction part, uh, what is database, what is DBMS stands for, what is SQL, what is JDBC, all these things we will discuss in today's class, right? Now, the first and foremost important thing is uh, uh, why we have to learn JDBC actually. That is the most important thing, the most, most important thing we have to learn, okay? The first and the foremost thing is, JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. Uh, I'm telling you once again, people who never, who didn't understand any concept, immediately type in the chat window. Because already I said you that, reaching to your end part is very important for me. Okay, so yes, completing syllabus, completing the modules, that is all secondary part for me. Not, that much important for me. So, immediately type in the chat window, right? So, JDBC is nothing but, it's a Java database connectivity and why we require JDBC concept is, frankly speaking, in Java, we can design and develop various types of applications, like we can develop standard applications, Windows applications, web applications, mobile applications, these are all the various kinds of applications we can develop in the Java. But, uh, the thing is, whatever the kind of application is, Ultimately, the application requires connection to the backend. What is connection to the backend? Backend is nothing but where you are storing your data that is called as your backend. And here, to connect to the backend part, either we are using a standard application or web application, mobile applications. What is a mobile application? Application which runs on the mobile phones are called as a mobile applications. Application which runs from the world wide web, they are called the web applications. Standard applications are the applications which, which runs from the uh, local machines, that's all. That is called the standard application. But whatever the kind of application is, 
ultimately the application is set to be successful when it is storing the data. Where you will be storing the data? You will be storing your data in the backend environment. How the Java application can connect to backend environment? Java application can connect to backend environment by using the JDBC concepts, right? So, what is JDBC stands for? JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity and it is an API that is called the, what is the API? API is nothing but application programming interface which consists of set of Java classes, interfaces and exceptions which are used to uh, make connection to the data, which are used to make connection to the databases. Who is going to connect? The Java application is going to connect to the database, right? So, JDBC programs are developed with Java JDBC, our platform and they are called as a vendor independent. What is the meaning of vendor independent? Vendor independent is nothing but our Java application can connect to any kind of backend environment. What is any kind of backend environment? It can connect to Oracle, it can connect to Sybase, a number of things we can make use of it, right? We can make use of, we, we can have number of connectors, we can, uh, we can have number of data types here. So, I'm making use of Notepad for typing some contents here. So, we can connect to Oracle or we can connect to MySQL which is an open source. We can connect to SQL Server. Like that, we can connect to anything. That means, my Java application can connect to all these kinds of backend environment. That is called as what? Your vendor independent, right? Now, what it is saying is, JDBC is a write once, compile once, run anywhere. What is the meaning of that? We are going to design and develop the application once. We are going to compile them and we are going to run on anywhere. Why we can run on anywhere? Because as we already know that Java is a platform independent programming language. Why there is a lot of crazy for the Java? There is a lot of crazy for the Java because of only only one reason that is called the platform independency. Because what is the meaning of platform independency? The meaning of platform independency is nothing but whatever the application we are designing and developing in one platform, if we can run on any number of platforms, any number of other platforms, that is called as a platform independent. So what it is saying that write once. What it is saying? It is saying write once, compile once, you can run on any number of platform. You can run on Linux, you can run on Unix, you can run on Solaris. Whatever the platform could be, you can run anywhere, right? And JDBC write applications in Java to access databases using standard SQL statements, right? And while still following some Java conventions. What is the, what is the meaning of this? Nothing but using JDBC, our Java application is trying to access databases and these databases uses what? Simple SQL commands. So even though you don't have SQL knowledge, what is SQL stands for? Structured Query Language. Even though you don't have Structured Query Language knowledge, no need to worry too much because in this uh, presentation, in these sessions only, we will provide you some SQL commands also, right? So no need to bother about uh, all those things, uh, right? So JDBC driver managers and JDBC drivers provides rich database world. So how these things are going to work, we will see all those things one by one. Short and sweet, by this time, uh, might you have understood what is JDBC. I am repeating the concept once again. JDBC stands for Java Database Connectivity. Using Java Database Connectivity, the Java application, what are Java applications are there? There are different types of Java applications are there. Already I said you, uh, we have different types of applications like Right. Already there are different types of applications are there. As I said you that we have we have standard application, standard application, we have Windows application, we have web application, we have mobile application. So all these applications, all these applications requires connecting to backend. What is backend? These are my backends. These are all my backends, right? So these applications, these are all your Java applications, right? These are all your Java applications. 
So all these Java applications can connect to the backend environment by using the only one technology that is called as JDBC, right? So what is JDBC saying? JDBC is saying you write the application once, compile once and run on any number of platform and our JDBC can access to any type of database using normal SQL commands, right? Are you understanding the class? Please type in the chat window so that I can go ahead. Please, everybody who are attending the class, uh, type in the chat window if you are understanding the class. Otherwise, I will repeat the class. Please quickly type in the chat window. Let us not waste time in waiting. Please quickly type in the chat window. Vikas Kumar, are you understanding the class? Vikas Kumar, are you understanding the class? Kamlesh, please type in the chat window so that we can go ahead. I want one answer that did you understand what is JDBC by this time? Thank you so much Vikas Kumar. Kamlesh, are you understanding what is JDBC? Did you understood what is JDBC? JDBC is the only one mechanism. Yes, JDBC is the only one mechanism. Using that mechanism, the various Java applications can access the data. Right? Right. Can we will go ahead now. The most important job we are doing now. So JDBC is a Java API that is used to connect and execute query to the database. That means using JDBC, we are going to connect and execute query on the database. So you can see the diagram. With this diagram, you will be understanding how Java application is going to connect to database, right? So please listen the class carefully. I am explaining through the diagram now. So we have Java application. How do we write the Java application? The Java application we can write by using the JDBC API. What is JDBC API? JDBC is Java Database Connectivity and API is nothing but application programming interface. What this JDBC API consists of? The JDBC API consists of all the classes, methods, interfaces which are used to write the JDBC programs or Java application programs, right? So our Java application is using JDBC API, right? Might you are aware or aware or not? When you are learning core Java, we used to import uh, I/O package, import Java.io package, import Java.lang package, import Java.util package. They are all called as what APIs, which consists of classes, methods, interfaces, etc. Similarly, whatever the classes, interfaces, methods present, uh, which are required for JDBC connectivity that we are going to import with the help of the package called as the package is called as here we call it as what import we are going to import the package import java dot sql package the sql package consists of the sql package consists of all the classes interfaces and methods how to import them we will see in the how to use them we will see in the next coming classes as the theory session is going on right so our java application has been constructed by using the JDBC API and now the most important thing is the Java application to connect to the, the Java application to connect to the database the Java application cannot connect to the database directly why because this is written in the pure Java language right whereas database has got separate language Oracle is separate, MySQL is separate, SQL Server is separate this language is not understandable to this language, right? Whatever the commands you write in database, that is not understandable to Java application. You write select star from EMP in database, or you say delete from EMP, or some other SQL commands you will be typing. Those SQL commands, the structure query language commands, because the database also has its own language format, that is not understandable to the Java application. Similarly, Whatever the Java instructions you are writing in Java language, that is not understandable to the database. Are you understanding me? Now, for this purpose, we require a JDBC driver. What is a JDBC driver? JDBC drivers are nothing but, they are the mechanisms. They are going to provide a mechanisms. With the help of drivers, we can access, the Java application can access the database. That means, the Java application calls are going to be converted into database calls and database calls are converted into Java application calls 
with the help of JBC drivers. Short and sweet, once again I am repeating what I am saying. Your Java application has its own language format that is called Java language. And database has its own language. It makes use of simple SQL query languages. So whatever you are writing in Java application, that is not understandable to the database language. Whatever you are writing from database, that is not understandable to here. So this is not understandable to this, this is not understandable to this. So to make it understandable, we require drivers. We require JDBC drivers. They, are, they, they act as a software tools. Whatever you are writing in Java application, these drivers converts into database language. Similarly, whatever database language is giving the output, the drivers is going to convert into the Java application. So the conversion part is going to be taken care by the drivers. So with this concept, we get a conclusion that to make the Java application connected to the database, ultimately we require a JDBC drivers. Right? We require a JDBC drivers. Now, in the next slides, we are going to see what are the various kinds of JDBC drivers are there and which drivers are good for making connection to Java application to the database and industry is using which drivers for making connection to database. All these things we will learn in the next coming slides. Right. Shall we go ahead? Please type in the chat window. Shall we go ahead? Please type in the chat window if you understand me. Otherwise, I will repeat it once again. Okay. Thank you, Kamlesh. I will go ahead. Right. Thank you, Kamlesh. Okay. Thank you, Vikas. Right. Yeah. Now, why to use JDBC? Already I have explained you why to use JDBC. Before JDBC, we used to make use of ODBC. What is ODBC stands for? Open Database Connectivity API. To connect to Java application, who is the ultimate hero? JDBC is the ultimate hero. Nobody can connect to database apart from using JDBC. We have to use JDBC only to make connection to database. So before JDBC, people used to make connection to database by using ODBC that is called as a open database connectivity. Was used to connect and execute query to database, but ODBC API uses ODBC driver which is written in the C language, which is a platform independent and unsecured. That is why some microsystem has defined its own API that is called as a JDBC API that uses JDBC drivers written in the Java language. Right? So why we are using JDBC? Why we are not using ODBC? Because before the existence of JDBC, people used to connect to database using the ODBC API. But ODBC API has been written using the C language and already we know that C is a platform dependent language and it is unsecured also. That is why some microsystem has defined its own API. What is that API? JDBC API and it has and uses JDBC drivers which are purely written in the Java language. Because of this reason we are using the JDBC. And what is API? Already we have seen that. Uh, already we have seen about what is API. It is an application programming interface. It is it is a, acts as a document that contains the complete description of the software product. It consists of all the classes. Uh, uh, the library files completely consists of that is called the API. So the most important job we are coming. Already in the previous slide, I have explained you how the Java application make connection to database using the JDBC driver because the Java application has its own Java language standard and database has its own uh, structured query language. Whatever the things we are writing in Java, not understandable database. Database language again is not understandable to the Java application. So therefore we require a one, that one JDBC drivers. What these JDBC drivers will do? The JDBC drivers will make use of uh, connection between the application and database drive, database. Now, what are the drivers are there and how those drivers are going to provide service? Which driver is the excellent driver? Which driver is used by the industry? That we are going to see now, right? So, we are having four types of drivers that is called as JDBC. ODBC bridge driver is one type of driver. The second type of driver is called native API driver. 
third type of driver is called network protocol driver and next type of driver is called as a thin driver so these are the four type of drivers generally people call them as uh, type 1 driver type 2 driver type 3 driver type 4 drivers since they, it is easy to remember uh, people call them as type 1 driver type 2 driver type 3 driver type 4 driver it is easy to remember but uh, that is not the right way to remember because whenever you face interviews very frequently asked questions in the interviews is name the JDBC drivers. They will ask you the question. At the time, you should not give the answer as type 1 driver, type 2 driver, type 3, type 4 like that because everybody knows this answer type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. But what are the real names and what are the original names? Since they are difficult to remember, people does not, uh, people, uh, does not show interest on remembering these names. So, that is why I am insisting you from now onwards that uh, remember these names uh, because this is a very frequently asked question in the interviews, right? So the first type of driver is called as a JDBC, ODBC bridge driver, native API driver, network protocol driver and thin drivers, right? While covering the classes, uh, I will be, uh, uh, be restricting on the uh, frequently asked questions also so that as everybody learning the uh, subject to achieve something like maybe to, to learn extra knowledge is one could be one reason or to achieve job could be the one reason. So that is the reason uh, I will be insisting the questions uh, and please focus on that. Right. Thank you. Okay. Now, JDBC driver is a software component. What is JDBC driver? It is a software component that enables Java applications to interact with the database. Wow. Super. What is JDBC driver? It is a software component using JDBC drivers, we can connect, who, who can connect? The Java application can connect to the database or Java application can interact to the database, right? So, I already have said you, there are four types of drivers. So, how these drivers are going to work? What are the advantages are there? What are the disadvantages are there? We will see one by one, right? right. The first type of driver the first type of driver is JDBC ODBC bridge driver. So, the JDBC ODBC bridge driver uses ODBC driver to connect to the database. So, it uses what driver? ODBC driver. Already in the previous slides, I have told you before the existence of JDBC, people used to connect to backend environment or databases by using ODBC and ODBC is written in the C language and C language is a platform dependent and it is unsecure. That is why Sun Microsystem has not using that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, has created its own drivers. But uh, uh, what is JDBC ODBC bridge driver? It is a ODBC driver cut to connect to the database. The JDBC ODBC bridge drivers converts JDBC calls into ODBC function calls. That means what is going to happen here? But uh, this is now disgrace because already we are having a other drivers that is called thin drivers and all. So, how, what are they? We will see now. So, what are the advantages of using this? Disadvantages we will see. Please understand this diagram carefully. I am explaining now. So, this is the first type of driver. This is the architecture of the first type of driver. So, already I have explained you the Java application which is written in the Java language by using some Java API. Because Java API consists of libraries. What, li what, what library consists of? Library consists of what are the classes, methods, interfaces, all those things will be present in the API, right. The Java application can be created by using the JDBC API. What is JDBC API consists of? Library files, right. Now, to connect Java application to the database, we have to make use of this driver. What is the driver I am making use of? Because as I already said you that, whatever the Java language you are writing in the Java application is not understandable to the database because it has its own language format. It has its own language format. Who is going to make understandable that Java is requesting so and so thing and your request has been given to Java application. So, who is going to make understandable? We are using the first type of driver called as JDBC ODBC bridge driver. What is going to happen? The JDBC calls is going to be given to the ODBC drivers and ODBC driver to the vendor database library and from what is vendor database library? That is that could be maybe Oracle, MySQL or SQL Server, whatever it could be. 
and from there to the connection of databases. So what is happening here? We can see with this architecture, there are number of layers are there. Your Java application is connecting to JDBC ODBC bridge driver. Your JDBC calls are converted into ODBC driver. You may ask question, why we are not using directly ODBC? Because ODBC is written in the C, in the C language. And C language is a platform, in the platform dependent and it is unsecure. So that, that is the reason directly I am not use, we are not using the ODBC. So the Java application is making use of JDBC ODBC driver and it is making use of ODBC driver and some vendor database library then reaching to the database. So many layers are there, yeah. so many layers are there. So when we have so many layers, uh, automatically the performance will be very, 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 very poor. Performance will be very, very poor. And that is one drawback. The major drawback is you need to install this ODBC driver on all the client machine. That means wherever the application is making connection to database, all, uh, all, in all the client machine, you have to install the ODBC driver because this ODBC driver is going to make it, make it transfer the calls from JDBC to database. So we require the ODBC driver to be installed on client machine. If we are having one or two, three clients, we can happily install. If we are having a hundred clients, is it possible to install on every machine? It is very difficult job for us. It is very, very difficult. That is why this driver is not considered as that much good driver because first failure is what? The performance wise it is poor. And installation of client, installation of drivers, ODBC drivers or on client machine is very difficult, frankly speaking. Okay. But it is good towards some things like easy to use. Uh, people can understand very easily. Why? Because ODBC drivers automatically will install in the machine people who are using uh, Windows uh, operating system. As soon as you install the Windows operating system, maybe XP or uh, Windows 7, whatever the kind of operating system, uh, you can see this. ODBC drivers, automatically these ODBC drivers uh, are installed. I will show you once, uh, just to show that uh, these drivers are already installed uh, in our machines, right? You can, you can go to control, you can check in your machine also, whether these ODBC drivers are there or not. You can go to administrative tools, you can go to, see, you got it, ODBC, can everybody see me? Yes, this, scheme will, this thing will be there for everyone, XP, Windows 7 or whatever the kind of OS you are using, you can see this. So in every every uh, operating system, in every Windows operating system, you can find this. That is uh, uh, that is why it is easy to use and can be easily connected to any database. That is the one advantage we are having. But uh, apart from advantages, it has got very bad disadvantages. What are the bad bad uh, disadvantages it is having? Is performance wise, it is very very poor. When we have less performance, uh, even though it is very easy to use, people never like to go. And the most biggest disadvantage is what? On every client machine installation of ODBC driver is very difficult, uh, is highly difficult. So these are the drawbacks present in the uh, JDBC ODBC driver. And moreover, the number of layers also more. Since number of layers are more, the performance will become. So this is your first type of driver. Coming to the second type of driver, that is called as a native API driver. What is a native API driver? The native API driver uses the client side libraries of the database. What it uses? It uses the client side libraries of the databases. The driver converts JDBC method calls into native calls. What is native calls? According to your language. That means whatever the native platform is there, according to that calls it's going to convert. Right? That is called native calls of the database API. It is not written in completely in Java. It is not completely written. This that means this driver is not completely written in Java, right? So you can see the architecture of this uh, native API driver. What is the architecture? The Java application is is written by using JDBC API. It is making use of native API driver, connecting to vendor database library, and then connecting to database here. So what are the advantage here? As the number of layer has reduced, performance is upgraded. Uh, then the JDBC, ODBC bridge driver. Compared to the previous, uh, that is called as the, the first driver, that is called JDBC, ODBC bridge driver. Compared to the first driver, the performance has upgraded a lot, right? Because uh, you can see the number of layers itself has rec decreased. So with that only we can analyze and estimate that how, uh, what would be the performance. But it has some disadvantage also. What is the disadvantage? 
the native driver needs to be here also this native drivers has to be installed on client machine as like the jdbc odbc bridge driver and the vendor client library needs to be installed on this is your vendor client library has to be installed on every every client machine that is also one uh, drawback so this is also not that much excellent driver to be used right the third type of driver is called as network protocol driver what is network protocol driver network protocol driver uses middleware or application server what this middleware or application server will do they are going to convert the jdbc calls directly or indirectly into the vendor specific database protocol and the most important benefit is it is fully written in java the first type of driver that is called as jdbc odbc driver not at all written in java native api drivers half partly written in java whereas network protocol driver fully written in the java so you can see here uh, we have java application which has been written using jdbc api we are using the driver native protocol network protocol driver and we are using again one more thing that is called the middleware which is the server side component to make connection to database that means this part is your client machine part so client is connecting to on middleware who is that middleware one application server to make connection database so what are the drawback for this it requires get network support it requires network support of middleware server if there is no network support is there the java application cannot act, cannot able to access the database and it requires data the database specific coding to the uh, to be done to the middleware that means whatever the coding you are done you are doing here it should be specific to the middleware and maintenance of network protocol drivers becomes costly also there is also one drawback present in this driver and uh, uh, the advantage is no client side library is required so and because of application server can perform many tasks like auditing loading balancing all so it does not requires any kind of uh, client side requirement is not there so that is one advantage present in the network protocol driver the last type of driver is a excellent driver every company uses every one uses so we have seen four types of three types of drivers till now among three type of drivers every three type of drivers we have seen some sort of advantages and more disadvantages but the fourth driver is the most widely used driver in all the environment okay uh, so what is this driver is called as this driver is a thin driver the network protocol driver uses middleware application server that converts jdbc uh, calls directly into in the, uh, and it is uh, fully written in the uh, java language uh, the thin driver is fully written in the java language the most important part is here here you can see the architecture please focus on architecture here jdbc api that is called as java application is written by using the jdbc api it is making use of thin driver and directly connect into the database so you can see the number of layers also reduced here the java application can directly connect to database so the performance is super here there is no question at all so better performance no software requirement nothing no payment no hard no network cost no middleware component required for us all these things nothing is required but the thing is driver depends on database obviously this is i will not consider this as a disadvantage why because whenever we will make use of database corresponding to the database we will install the driver so that is not a big problem for us installation of the driver so that is why every people will make use of thin driver as a excellent driver and industry also makes use of thin driver only for making run the program even in our sessions also we will make use of the fourth type of driver that is called as a thin driver right so these are the four types of drivers are there so before going ahead uh towards the remaining things uh, i would i would like to repeat uh, the concept once again and then we'll have some questionary time then we will go ahead right short and sweet jdbc is nothing but java database connectivity by using J J uh, java database connectivity the java applications the java applications could be a standard applications web application mobile application whatever the application could be if those application wants to make connection to database they have to make use of jdbc connections right now to make jdbc to be connected to the back end environment or to database we requires the drivers what are drivers drivers are the software components by using driver components 
we can make connection to database. We are having four types of drivers. The first type of driver is called JDBC, ODBC bridge driver, maybe API partly Java drivers, uh, network protocol drivers, uh, thin driver. These are the four types of drivers we are having. So using the four types of uh, drivers, we can make connection to the uh, database. Right? Now before going more ahead, uh, if people does not have knowledge on uh, connecting to database and uh, sorry, uh, what is database, uh, what, is, what are the terminologies we are going to use in databases, all these so things also we would like to cover in, the, in our sessions. Right? If you have any questions, in, uh, you can type in the chat window. Okay. Can we see previous slides also to write? <laughs> this is all four drivers and need to install Kamlesh. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, four types of drivers need to install. The fourth driver here, yeah, the, whatever the kind of database we are going to use, automatically uh, the, those drivers will be available for us and we can set the path for that and we can make access of the fourth type of driver. Remaining three types of drivers requires installation. That's what I'm telling you. Since all the three types of drivers have got more disadvantages, four type of drivers don't have any disadvantage. Performance wise it is rich and um, accessing is also good. Uh, but the thing is, anyhow, to make connection to database, the application requires some database availability in your, in your uh, system. So, whatever database you are using, that uh, the driver you are going to use it, that's it. So, if, I'm, if we are using Oracle, we are making, we are going to make use of Oracle uh, driver and we will make connection database. So, um, we don't have more and more layers also, we don't require network support, we don't require any middleware components. So, this is the thin driver is the uh, simplest uh, driver. That is why we are going to use it. Kamlesh is asking, uh, can we see the previous slides uh, so that we can write. No need to write Kamlesh, you can make a running notes if required while, uh, uh, while learning. Uh, all these slides will be available in the kernel training website. Uh, you can freely and happily download uh, as well as uh, uh, you can listen the class once again also. The recorded sessions will be uploaded in the website. Uh, uh, you can, whenever you have a doubt or whenever you feel uh, you want to listen once again, you can listen uh, from the recorded sessions as well as these are all the slides which is available uh, in the kernel training website. Apart from these slides, we will be having number of uh, blogs also. Uh, that blog consists of, uh, what is the website? It's a kernel training website, kerneltraining.com. So in that, we will be having number of programs, number of, not one or two programs, number of programs because uh, we will teach you not only theoretically, our focus is reaching you practically and we will teach you all the programs individually, every step by step operations we will teach you, right? So any questions you have? Any more questions if you have, you can type, otherwise I will ask the questions now. Okay. Uh, one question I am having, what is a driver? What is a driver? Anyone can answer. There are a number of people, there are a number of attendees are there, but uh, I can see very few who are very much, uh, yes. What is a uh, driver? What is a driver? Vikas, I would like to give, uh, give this chance to Vikas first of all. Your teaching quality is excellent. Thank you so much Vikas. Uh, but I will be very, very happy uh, when uh, you will reach to the programming le level. Uh, then I will be very, very happy. Then I will accept your compliment. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, right. Vikas, what is a driver? Vikas, what is a driver? We, ha we have drivers, right, to make connection to the database. We are having Java application. And to make Java application connect to database, this is a symbol we use for database. So I am unable to draw the diagrams properly with this uh, uh, icon. So to make connection to database, we require drivers. What is a driver? You can type in the chat window, no problem. Voice is not required. You can type in the chat window. Okay, driver is nothing but it drives to support program. Awesome, very good answer. Okay, very good. Any other answer? Okay, so uh, a driver is nothing but it is a software component using that driver we can make connection to database. Right, very good. Very good. We'll go ahead now. Now please give me one answer everybody. How many of you have knowledge on uh, RDBMS or any backend environment? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Super Vikas. Yes, yes. Also requires required to run program. Yes. Support program. Yes, absolutely right uh, Vikas. You are absolutely right answer. 
Please type in the chat window quickly. How many of you know DBMS concepts or structure query language? Uh, in the first day itself, Vikas is doing wonder. Yes, the answers. I appreciate your answers. You are giving me excellent and correct answers. Thank you so much. Please repeat the question. My question is, uh, uh, do you all have the knowledge of uh, relational database model or any SQL knowledge or any backend knowledge you have? I am asking. Anybody? Everybody has asked. And this question is for everybody. Okay, very good. All right, we will go ahead now. Okay, uh, we will go ahead now. Uh, as this is our first session today, uh, uh, so we will have the class up to uh, 9.25 today. And tomorrow onwards, we will have the class according to the schedule, scheduled by the kerneltrading.com because the schedule is uh, 8 to 10 because today is the first session. So, we will have the class up to 9.25 today. So, how much I can cover up to 9.25, I will try to cover, okay. And tomorrow onwards, uh, we will uh, we'll have a class up to uh, 10 o'clock, right, yeah, right. Coming to... Uh, but further due to some disturbances, no problem because you are doing wonderful, you are giving a wonderful answers, you can, you can do, you can do, everybody can do, right? Yes, coming to relational database, coming to relational database model, see, we are not covering complete relational database model, why we are touching relational database model because whenever you are, your Java application is connecting to database, we are going to make use of some queries, some SQL commands. At that time, you should not get some doubts what these commands stands for, what these commands will do. So, to avoid that kind of situation, uh, uh, we are uh, teaching you some uh, relational uh, commands, right? So, and terminals also we are teaching you, right? Now, in relational database model, uh, we use, what is the database? A database is nothing but an organized collection of information. So, where all data is going to be stored in an organized fashion, right? So, in relational database model, these are the terms which we use very frequently. What are these models? What are these terminologies? Table, record, field or column, primary key, unique data. These are all the frequently used terminologies. So, let me explain. What is a table? A table consists of rows and columns, right? This is my table. I am giving this table name as EMP. I am giving this table name as EMP, right? Now, in this EMP table, I am having some columns like employee number is one column, employee name is one column, e name is one column, and salary is one column. So, this is called about columns or fields we call and whatever the data we keep, employee number 1, employee name, Vikas and his salary, maybe 1 lakh, right? Uh, you can put as many zeros as you like, uh, right? So, this is called one record or one row we can call them as. Similarly, we can add one more row, which is going to show one more employee name, maybe uh, uh, Kalyan. One more employee number is 2, employee name Kalyan, and then his salary. So, this is called as a table. A table consists of a combination of rows and columns, right? And what is the primary key and unique data here? Nothing but primary key is nothing but in the employee number column, generally, once we give the employee number, that employee number should not be repeated for the next employee because it is a, it is, uh, it is not right manner actually, and uh, it is not a, a perfect way of maintaining database also. So, once employee number has joined, one employee has joined, we give one unique employee number. To maintain the uniqueness, we give the primary key. The primary key will not accept duplicate and duplicate and null values. That means, as soon as employee number joins, as soon as employee joins, immediately we give what? One employee number. So, we should not keep a null. Null means what? Empty. We should not keep null. At the same time, we should not give the duplicate value. I should not give, I should not keep null here. At the same time, I should not give one also. Why? Because if you give one, it is called a word duplicate here. So, primary key will not accept null value as well as a duplicate value. Null means what? Empty. 
There is a frequently asked question in the interview. Is there any difference between null and zero? Null and zero. What is the difference between null and zero? Very frequently asked question. Null and zero. Is there any difference? Is there or not? Certainly there is a difference. Is there? What is the difference? Please type in the chat window. Anybody? Yeah. Absolutely correct. Because absolutely. Null does not have a value. Zero has a value. It has a value. Zero has some value. Null does not have any value. Very good. Very good. Very good. So these are all the terminologies which are which we are going to use in the relational database. Uh, and in SQL statements, we are going to work with the queries and record sets. So how we are going to work with queries and record sets, we will see now. So so structured query language. What is structured query language? The structured query language is a query language. Query means questions. Query means what? Questioning is called the query. So in structured query language, how the commands, how the queries can be performed, the queries can be performed with the help of these keywords. These are all the keywords, right? Select is a keyword, from is a keyword, where, group by, order by, insert into, update, delete from. These are all the keywords. These are all called as keywords. Select, from, where, group by, order by, insert, update, delete. What is select? It retrieves fields from one or more tables. What is from? From which table you want to retrieve it? You want to retrieve the data from this table basing on what criteria? There means what criteria? I want all the data whose salary is more than 5000. Or I want all data whose salary is less than 5000. I want all data the employees who are not at all getting any salary. So that is called as my criteria. That is called as a condition. Criteria is condition. Group by, you can group the records by using the criteria called as a grouping also. You can do the condition either by using using the order by clause also. What is the meaning of insert into? Insert into is used to insert a record. That means as I said you that in SQL we will be having the representation of data is done with the help of table. In table we will be having what? records. I want to add one more record, so I will use what command? Insert command. So one more record is inserted here. Right? That is called to insert a record, new record. I am going to use a insert command. What is the update? Already some data is there here. Some data is there here. Some data is here. This data, I want to make some modification. Please, everybody, people who does not have a knowledge of SQL, understand carefully. Very frequently, people get confused with these two commands, insert and update. Insert is used to insert a new record. Whereas update means what? For instance, salary is there here, 3000, or 9000 is there here. Now he got a hike of 12,000. So what we do now? We will follow update. So we are removing the 9000 and updating his 9000 salary with the 12,000 salary. Now instead of 9000, what is the new data it will be having? 12,000. Yes, update means modification. Yes, that is absolutely right. And update means modifications. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Delete means what? I want to delete this record permanently. I don't have to, I, I don't have any work with this, so I will delete it. So that is called delete. Right. So these are the SQL keywords are there. Uh, we are going to use in our Java application uh, all these keywords whenever we require and whenever we require to meet the connection to the database. Some basic SQL uh, from uh, select queries we are seeing now. Select query here, some simplest formats we are seeing now. Just imagine that this is a table. I am having a table. Uh, the name of the table is author. And we have uh, these columns. What are the columns? Author ID, last name and some other columns are also there. So what I am saying now, select. Select is a what? My command. Select is my command. Author ID, last name from authors. What is this? Authors is a name of the table. In this table, I am having some columns, but I don't want to view all the columns. I want to view only few columns. What columns I want to view? I want to view author ID. I want to view last name. That's all. I don't want anything. So at that time, I will use the command select. Select is a command to select the particular columns or particular rows. So select author ID, last name from authors. So I am having four rows, 
they will be showing four rows, but not all columns, only two columns that is called the author ID and last name. Why it is showing two columns only? Because you ask two columns, author name and last name. That is why it is showing two columns from each table, author's table. We can give some conditions also. The conditions should be given by using the WHERE clause. So, WHERE clause is used for specifying the criteria or condition. Just imagine we are having these columns. What columns are there? Title, edition number, copyright, from titles. Title is the one table. Just imagine that we are having this title, uh, table. What is the name of the table? Title. In the title table, like in the previous example, we are having author's table. Now in this, sorry, in this example we are having a titles table. In titles table, I am having columns like title is one column, author name is one column, copyright is one column. And I want to read from the table called as titles, where copyright greater than 1999. I don't want to see all the titles. I want to see only those books or those titles whose copyright is more than 1999. That means Below 98, I don't want. Who are greater than 1999. So, about 1999, I want to have. So, the where clause condition can be used with the help of these operators. These are all called as the operators. Less than, greater than, less than equals, greater than equals, equal. This is called the equal symbol. Not equal. These are not equal symbol, right? Or we can use some wildcard characters also. These are all called wildcards. Percentile is one wildcard. Underscore is the one more wildcard. How these wildcards works, we will see now. Right. So, for instance, uh, we, are, we are seeing the example with the where clause. So, just for instance, uh, I want uh, author ID, first name and last name from author's table. This is my author's table, for imagine. Where last name like percent, deep percentage. What is the meaning of that? I want select the command is a command to select the rows from the Authors table. You want what columns? I want author ID, first name and last name from the authors table. But what do you want to visit? What do you want to see them? Whose last name is beginning with D. Percentile means this is a wild character, wildcard character. The percentile denotes the remaining characters could be anything. The number of characters could be anything. And it could be anything. It could be A, B, C, anything. But the first character should be always D. That is called as a D percentile. The first character should be D. Remaining all could be anything. So, where last name like D. So, it will not follow the first name. It will follow for the last name. So, first name, first character is D. Right. Condition satisfied. Here also condition satisfied. So, how many rows we got? We got the output as two rows here. One more example. Select author ID, first name, last name. I want to see author ID, first name, last name from author's table. This is the author table. Where last name like underscore I percentile. What is the meaning of that? The first character could be anything. But second underscore means what? It is also a wild character, wildcard character. Percentile represents more than one character. Underscore represents single character. Percentile represents more than one character. And underscore represents only single character. So, here I am asking my first character could be anything, but the second character must and should be I. And remaining characters could be anything. Right? First character could be anything. But second character should be having the I. And after I, it can have any number of characters and whatever the characters could be. <coughs> According to your condition, yeah, according to your condition, yes, we can, right. And according to your condition, the second character is I, so we got this out. Now the time is 9.25. Uh, I would like to complete this order by class. Then we will wind up the session. And before winding up the session, we will be having the questionnaires and your doubts. And after that, we will wind the class, right. So what is the order by class? Order by class is nothing but <coughs> in Oracle or in SQL, we can order the data either by using ascending order or by using the descending order. So, the ordering is done with the help of order by clause. Ordering is done by using the order by clause. So, ascending order is one order, descending order is one order. So, ascending, if you don't specify the order, 
जैसे कि उसे स्पेसिफाई ऑर्डर नहीं ऑर्डर बाई एंड इफ डोट स्पेसिफाई असेंडिंग ऑर्डर बाय डिफॉल्ट द ऑर्डरिंग इज डन इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर बट फॉर डिसेंडिंग ऑर्डर इट इज मैंडेड टू स्पेसिफाई द डिसेंडिंग इज इट क्लियर वी विल सी दिस एग्जांपल एंड वी विल जॉइन द क्लास सेलेक्ट ऑथर आईडी फर्स्ट नेम लास्ट नेम फ्रॉम ऑथर टेबल आई वांट टू विजिट फॉर ऑथर नेम फर्स्ट नेम लास्ट नेम फ्रॉम ऑथर टेबल द नेम ऑफ द टेबल इज ऑथर आई वांट टू ऑर्डर बाय लास्ट नेम लास्ट नेम इज व्हाट दिस इज माय लास्ट नेम हाउ यू वांट टू ऑर्डर असेंडिंग एंड If you order by last name and if you don't specify ascending also it will work because if you specify or don't specify by default order by is going to order by order in ascending order only. So giving A S C is a optional. A S C stands for ascending order, right? But if you want to order in descending order, B S C is mandatory. This is mandatory, right? This is mandatory. Group. Ascending order there is no need to say. There is no need uh, ascending order. There is no need to say A S because if you simply say order by last name, that is enough. This is not required for us. By default, it is going to give us an ascending order. That is called ascending order. Select author name, first name, last name from author from author's table. Order by last name. I want to order the records based on last name. So first we got sanitary, uh, and, and I get we got uh, all the last name uh, order is in descending order. So this is called as your order by clause, right? Uh, uh, some more SQL commands will continue tomorrow, and in tomorrow's class we will start the uh, JDBC. Uh, how the JDBC connection happens to the application? The steps we are going to see, as well as what are the classes, methods, interfaces are there, and how do we connect to them? All those things we will cover in the tomorrow session. As it is a first day session, we are we are winding up by 9:30. But before winding up, please quickly type in the chat window and ask your questions. But uh, uh, for your information purpose, uh, I am telling you all these things before only. You, you don't need to bother about uh, the slides and notes part because all these things will be present in the Kernel Training website. You can please log on to kerneltraining.com website and you can see all these recordings. Whatever the things I have taught you now, all these recordings will be. Uploaded in the website, you can download them or you can connect to the website and you can listen them once again if you need it. Or else, you can post your queries to the website and personally, I will answer every question because, as I said, you already that reaching to every individual student is the motto of kernel training, right? And uh, uh, programming part also we will cover with the help of blogs. Everything we will do it. Can you, ma'am, repeat once again? Full means I didn't understand it. Has uh, full means the overall uh, website name you're asking, kerneltraining.com, right? Uh, so in today's session, uh, uh, we are just revising before winding the session. The winding the session before winding the session, <coughs> we just revise. Yeah, we are just revising it. So in today's session, we have covered all these things. So in today's session. We have covered uh, what is JDBC, what is the importance of JDBC, why we require JDBC. We have seen uh, JDBC with Java database connectivity. Using JDBC, uh, <coughs> we can uh, make Java application connect to backend. The Java application could be anything. It could be a standard application, mobile application, web application, whatever the application could be. Uh, we can the, the Java application can connect to database using the JDBC mechanism, right? And uh, this is the architecture how J Java application makes use of database. So uh, whenever Java application make con connection to database, it requires JDBC drivers. What are JDBC drivers? JDBC drivers are software components which are necessary uh, to make connection to the database. Without these drivers, we cannot make connection to the database. And we have uh, uh, why we have to use JDBC very frequently asked question. Because before the existence of JDBC, people used to make connection to database by using ODBC API. But ODBC API is written in Java, I mean C language. But C is a platform dependent language as well as it is unsecure. That is why some microsystem has defined its own API that is called JDBC API. And API consists of all the library files, which consists of classes, interfaces, methods, and all. So using them, we will make connection to database. And uh, we are having. 
uh, uh, to connect to the uh, database, we are having four type of drivers. Uh, JDBC OEBC bridge driver is one, native API driver, native protocol driver, thin driver, these are all the four types of drivers are there. The first driver has got more and more disadvantages, performance well it is poor. <coughs> On every client machine we need to install the ODBC driver, so this is not the current driver. This is a native API driver also, uh, we need to install the native drivers on all the client machine and apart from that we require vendor client library to be installed on client machine, so that is also not good and uh, our type of driver, uh, it requires network support and middleware component is required. Four type of driver is an excellent driver as the number of player also reduced, performance is increased, no software, nothing is required, only thing is we require drivers depends on database. So this is also not requirement I will say because anyhow we will be using one database. So corresponding to the database that driver we are going to use it. So our session also we will also continue teaching JDBC using the thin drivers only. So we have covered the relational database models also. So because when the Java application is connecting to the backend environment, uh, we are going to use some uh, commands, SQL commands. At that time, if people does not have a knowledge of SQL commands, some uh, <coughs> prerequisites we are teaching here. So <coughs> table, record, fields in SQL, the information is stored in the form of table. So we have rows and columns here. That is called as table records fields and primary key means what? Uh, it is not going to accept null values and duplicates. So we will keep employee number or student number or some IDs as a primary key because these numbers will not be repeated or should not be kept as a null. Right? These are the structured query languages we have seen select command uh, for selection of the uh, rows from the database. Insert command is used to insert the new record and update command is used to make some modification to the existing data and delete command is used to delete the data from the page. <coughs> some queries we have seen. Right. And we have closed our session from the order of the clause. Right. Do you have any queries? Please type in the chat window so that we can fit the class. What is the difference between delete and drop? Oh, also what is the work of RDBMS? Delete command is going to delete the row. If you want to delete the row, they are going to use the delete command. What drop will do? Whenever the drop, whenever you don't want the entire table, then what I will say, drop table, table name. It is going to drop complete table. You will not have any record. Whereas the delete command is going to delete one particular record. Okay? That is the difference between drop and delete. One more difference is there strictly difference that is <coughs> delete command is belong, belongs to DML category. What is DML stands for? Data manipulation language. The SQL commands are categorized under various categories. DDL, DML, TCL, DCL, etc. So the delete command is belongs to DML. DML means data manipulation language. Whereas drop command is belongs to DDL. DDL stands for data definition language. So the DML command is a what? It's a delete command is a DML command. So whenever you delete the record, if you want to roll back there, if you want to cancel the deletion also, so that is possible in the DML commands because in DML the cancellation of transaction is possible. But in DDL the cancellation of transaction is not possible. For example, you have dropped the table suddenly. You don't want, you drop it. Suddenly you have changed your intention. I want to get back the table once again. That is not at all possible. Why? Because in DDL, all the commits, are, all the commands are auto commit. That means in DML, all commands are not auto commit. Whenever you want to have a transaction to be cancelled, you can you can cancel that. And whatever the wrong mistakes or wrong operation, wrong transaction you have performed, you can get back them. That is the difference between drop and delete command. So delete command is used to delete a particular row or a row based on condition. Whereas drop command is used to drop the entire table. And once you drop it, they can't get back once again. Why? Because drop command is belongs to DDL. DDL stands for data definition language. And DDL commands are auto commit. Automatically they will be committed. Whereas DML, that is called the data manipulation language, delete command is belongs to the DML command. So the transactions are they are not auto commit. You can if you want to uh, like if you want to uh, roll back the work, you can roll back with help of that. Is the answer clear? Data control language, yeah. Any queries you have? 
or shall we? yeah okay then okay good night to everybody uh, uh, tomorrow the same time we'll have the class once again and you can come with the new questions and we'll have the uh, class uh, next time what happens in this year this skill is a data control language data control language means we'll be having grant and revoke there in that data control languages that means uh, we are having number of users we are having user 1 user 2 user 3 we want to share some data among these users so this user can grant the data to this user even this user can also grant this data to this user so it's called granting in and after that if this user wants to take back the data what the data it has given to this user so then this this user can take the data by using the revoke command so we have a grant and revoke commands in the dcl that is called data control languages is it clear because dcl data control language yeah permissions which we have to do permissions we have to do permissions yes grant and revoke permissions yes uh, we have a depth knowledge of that when we specifically learn because all these things are not required in java very basic connectivity that is the reason we are uh, uh, we are just leaving that part dcl dcl all commands were overlapping that because that is all not required for us simply we require insert update delete commands to make connection to data trace application grant revoke all those things are not required so that is the reason we are not uh, included in this session so you can have a full knowledge of sql commands uh, in the sql sessions also right okay thank you very much uh, good night to everybody uh, we'll stop the sessions here Thank you very much.